We sincerely appreciate your interest manifested in looking at this DVD up to this point. Without reviewing all that we've covered, we have noted that Christ was sent to the earth by God's grace and goodness to save us from sin. We also noted that sin is painful, it hurts, and it has affected everyone. God's plan was to send Christ to save us from sin, and Christ now has become the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Hebrews 5, 8, and 9. Some specific acts of obedience are given in the gospel, the good news, which Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, and 16 was to be preached to every creature, including you and me. And in that, you see some of the commands. Jesus said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Thus, Christ gave other commands and directions in the gospel, warning us to honor and respect him and promising us, if anyone goes too far and does not abide in the teaching of Christ, he has not God. The one who abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. Second John verse nine. That verse introduces the fact that if we do not abide in Christ's teaching, if we do not obey Christ, we will be separated from God. That same truth is found in Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. In 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 10, Paul adds that Christ will return with the angels of his power, in flaming fire, rendering vengeance to those who know not God and who obey not the gospel, who will suffer punishment, even eternal destruction from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Therefore, there are some serious consequences if we do not abide in Christ's teaching. Do not obey him. Jesus said in John 12, 48, He that rejects me and receives not my sayings has one that judges him or condemns him the word that I spoke. The same will judge him in the last day. Thus, Paul adds in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10, for we must all be made manifest before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether it be good or bad. Romans 14 and 12 adds, So then each one of us shall give an account of himself unto God. You know, in reality, there are, are ways that each one of us has related to God every day that we've lived. In Acts 17, verse 25, Paul stated that God gives to all life, breath, and all things. Just think, every breath that you breathe relates you to God. A number of years ago, while preparing a sermon, I called the High Plains Oxygen and Equipment Company in Lubbock, Texas, where I was then living, and asked them what would it cost to get oxygen for one day. They were a little bit surprised at the request, but in a few moments gave me the figure of $42 a day. It would surely be higher than that now. But I then multiplied that by 360 days in a year, coming up with a $15,120 fee to breathe air for one year. If I then were to multiply that by the number of years I have lived upon the earth, I would come up with a figure of $1,209,600 if God were to send me my air bill. If he were to send me the gravity bill, I have no idea my indebtedness to God at that point. Don't you see that you in many ways have related with Christ then 
and God every day that you have lived. Surely you like his air to breathe. Surely you appreciate his gravity. And all of this just emphasizes how good God has been to us. And it also emphasizes our indebtedness to God. Friend, don't doubt it. One day, each one of us is going to give an account of himself or herself to God, not in regard to air or gravity, but concerning Jesus Christ, whom God sent forth to be the Savior of the world. 1 John 4:14. 4, the sobering question is, will he be your, sir, your Savior? Uh, at the Choctaw Church of Christ, we would like so much to share the gospel, the good news, further with you, which is God's power unto salvation. Romans 1 and verse 16. Why don't you call us at 405-390-8732 or come and visit with us at the corner of Reno and Choctaw Road in Choctaw, Oklahoma. As stated in Numbers 10 verse 29, Come thou with us, and we will do you good.